Hey guys, Andrew here from Nightcore Singapore. Today we're going to look at the new Nightcore P23i. Alright, how it stacks up against other lights and the six key things that makes this a perfect light for police and military. Alright, before we begin, if you want to win this latest P23i, make sure you subscribe to this channel and comment below on how this P23i will help you in the kind of work that you do versus what you're using now. Alright, so once we hit 500 likes, I'll announce the winner in the description box below. So let's start with the biggest question. What's the difference between the P20i Right, the P20i UV, right, the P20iX, and now the P23i, right? So all of these came out just last year. So here's how they stack up. The only difference between these two, one has UV, one, one doesn't, right? So the rest is the same. The P23 is actually an upgrade to P20i. Alright, so same shape, same buttons, but better controls. The biggest upgrade is the brightness, right? This does 3000 lumens instead of the older 1800 lumens. This hits a further 470 meters instead of the older 343 meters. The beam pattern is perfectly crafted, so it's easier for you to acquire targets. Downrange, right? It's great for weapon mounting or for use with a firearm. But what about the P20iX at 4000 lumens? Brighter is better, right? Actually, no. This produces a very, very different flood beam. Right here's how the P20iX looks like against the P23i. Almost exactly the same, right? Same shape, same height, same thickness. So meaning at the same brightness of say 800 lumens, the P23i hits up to 244 meters, while the P20iX only hits less than half at 103 meters, P20i express the light evenly all over the table here. Right, the beam that comes out is extra wide. P23i, you can see is a very tight spot going down the middle here. So the flat beam is perfect for say lighting up a huge five-story warehouse space all at once. And that's because of the four LEDs versus the one LED in the P23i. So you can kind of see the P20iX as a shotgun, right? Not effective at long distance, but up close, it hits everything at once. P23i will be a rifle, right? To hit further, precise, targeted, and unmatched at lighting up and identifying threats. It does this better than any other light that has come before it, and I'll show you exactly why. So the first thing, it has one-handed rear tail cap controls, right? Because operators always need one hand free for their weapon or to check documents. There's no space for lights that need two hands to change modes. Something like the MH12S, right? You need to break grip to change modes because the mode buttons are in front here, right? There's only one button at the back for on and off. So if I want to change brightness, I need to drop whatever I'm using on my left hand, change the brightness to low, medium, high, and then I'm back, right? All lights like the MH10 with no tail cap at the back, you have to turn it on, get it to the brightness I want, then go. Then if I want to change again, I need to break grip and change again, right? So you see the difference versus the P23i. Once it's on, on the back, just one thumb, change brightness and you're good to go. Number two is beam type, right? It's meant to be used with firearms. So the preference is to focus more light downrange to light up your target. One of the problems with using a flat light to do that, if you actually try at night at 50 meters away, you can't tell what someone is actually holding. Is that a knife, a black stick, handphone, wallet, right? If he's hiding something behind a jacket or behind his back, you can't really see because there's not enough light on him. With a mixed beam like the P23i with a high CD rating, you can put more lumens in a concentrated spot so you can actually see what they're holding. Right, the easiest way to compare beam type is in the CD rating. Right, the higher the number, the more focused the beam is. You can find this number on all NC charts. The P23i has five times the CD rating of the 20iX, and that's why the beam is five times more focused. This is another key thing to look out for if the flashlight you're buying has no NC charts and instead tells you it has a wide vision or true max beam. They are selling marketing fluff to you, right? Go for lights with real measurements so you know exactly what you're getting. Number three is strobe ready, right? Here's a strobe ready switch here. Once pressed and then you got it. Right, so now stroke ready and stroke mode are two different things. The MH12S right, might have stroke mode, but to access it, you need to turn it on, then you press and hold the front button, then you get stroke. So this again breaking the rule of one hand operation. On the P23i, all you need to do is press the stroke ready switch at the back, bam, and you're good to go. Right, There's no twisting, cycling, on and off, just press and bam. So then you might ask, hey, why do I need strobe ready for? As one operator puts it, it draws 100% attention of anyone you're pointing it at because of how 
distracting and different it is, especially for drivers. From the rear view mirror or side window, if you just point at them on turbo, it looks like a high beam from another car. But if you stroke them, it looks different and they have to look like, hey, what's going on? So this is the same for crowd control. In clubs, for example, there are already a lot of flashing lights in there, but when you come in with a non-linear strobe light, it shocks them because it's completely different. Right? It's this visual shock that helps you either get their attention or give you the split second to take action. Right? So a great example of taking action is this story from a local paramedic. Right? He was ended attending to a drunk person, then a drunk person tried to attack and touch one of the female paramedics. So he stroked the drunk guy with a P10. The guy puked and was blinded long enough for another paramedic to pin him down until the police arrived to take over. Right, so this is a true story. So the P10 he was using was only 800 lumens. This is 3000 lumens. So imagine the kind of effect you're gonna get in real life. You also realize that there is no SOS or beacon modes or color modes on this because the light cannot allow accidental activation of a mode that you don't want, especially for operators. So imagine you're under high stress, you mash your light to turn on, then accidentally you cycle into beacon mode and then you get stabbed. Right, this is true because there are lights out there like the SRT7 right with a cycle interface. You go from high, then you twist, you go to strobe, then you twist to adjust brightness, you make heavy on red, and then you turn it off and then you forget about it. Then when you need to use it, you mesh expecting a bright light but comes out a red light and then you get trouble. So this is the kind of interface that high risk operators will never use. Right, it works for lower risk uh, professions but for high risk users, it's a potential point of failure. Right on the P23i, there's no way you can accidentally go into a mode you don't want because it doesn't exist. Right, this brings me to the two modes of operations. When you first get the light, it's going to be in daily mode, meaning whatever brightness you turn the light on, let's say I switch to low mode, I turn it off and on again, it will remember this brightness mode. It also has a quick turbo that's especially useful for a checkpoint type of work where you have the light on low, you're walking around, then you suddenly need to flag an oncoming truck, have your thumb on the mode switch, press, bam, flag or wave or whatever you need to do. Once you let go, it goes back to low and you're back to normal. Right, there's no cycling and twisting of cycling high, cycling low, the different brightness levels. Now this behavior conserves battery life and controls temperature so you don't always need to be on 3000 lumens all the time then the light heats up very fast. To get it on tactical mode, when the light is off, hold the mode button down and unscrew. Right, it will blink twice showing that it's in tactical mode. Now as long as you mash the button, it will always turn on at 3000 lumens. Even if you change it to low, right, you turn it off, you turn it on, it's always back on turbo. Right, zero points of failure, the light always works. Number four is silent signaling. This is always overlooked but on the ground is always needed. Say I need to signal too short and too long, I can silently. Right, with the lights like the MH10, it's impossible to do because there is no tail cap switch for me to press and let go. Right, to turn it on, I have to click on, click off, click on, click off again. Right, I cannot get the frequent speed that I need for signal use. Number five is a real strike bezel. There are many lights that claim to have a strike bezel and they look like this, something like the TM9K, this slim steel bezel here. Like these are marketed to help you in a self-defense situation where you're hitting a skin and bone. But as a law enforcement officer, you're not going to do that, right? You'll be using it to break through car windows, random obstacles blocking your way through urban areas. And when you bash these type of rings on a, say, a concrete corner at a bad angle, the rings will bend because it's so thin and you get damaged like this. You can see the glass has cracked at this point of contact here. That's why they've made the entire front head of the P23i from hardened steel. So you have a rock solid bashing bezel. All right, on top of that, they added three hardened ceramic beads here that focus all your force into a single point, all right, instantly shattering any kind of car window. To help withstand the impact, they've also added heavy duty front springs to stop the battery from slamming into the circuit board. So I'm gonna show you the difference between a P23i, which has front springs for impact protection and MT22, which does not have any front springs. So when you drop the battery into the light, it's gonna hit the front and the more you drop it in, the more it's gonna hit the front, the circuit is gonna get damaged here. Watch what happens on the P23i when I drop the battery in. Right, bounces. So this protects against repeated bashing, rifle recoil and of course, 
it drops on the ground. Right, when you drop it on the ground, the battery won't smash through the circuit board in the front. Now the size of the bezel also helps with grip. So when you hit something, your grip doesn't slip through like other slim profile lights like the MH12S. You have wet weather, you're in glove, you hit something down, it's gonna move. So it's little considerations like this that matter when you actually use it in reality. Number six are carry options. The P23i comes with this standard three-way nylon holster with a top cover. The previous version, P20i, came with the NTH20, which is a quick draw holster. Right, but some have commented that it pops off too easily or when you have it on your belt, a jacket might snag on it and it just pops off, then you lose your light. So it's up to you how you want to run it. At least now you have a full coverage option and if you want to have the quick draw option, you can go for the NTH20 or the NTH25 has a similar locking function. So you can switch this lever here and the light locks, right? It doesn't come off anymore. Right, you can also go for a nylon option like the NCP30 here. So on the back is mole mount and on the front, you just pop it in there. For something like this, you can mount it sideways as well. If you prefer to run without holsters, the new lanyard loops gets you more mounting options with your lanyard. So some of the guys like to run it like this for better retention, right? In a fist kind of grip instead of looping this on your wrist. The new lanyard loops also mean it can tail stand. The earlier P20i had no loops, so it couldn't be used in this way, right? It would just drop. If you're looking for attachments, use these 32mm size filters and cones. I right, just pop this on and it instantly becomes a insanely visible 3000 lumen traffic beacon. Right, it can also be used as a stroke beacon. Right, if you need light discipline, you can also pop in these red 32mm filters to get your red beam. The last is battery type. Now the reason why it has almost doubled the runtime of previous lights is the 21700 model battery compared to a 18650 battery further compared to a double A battery here. Look at the size difference, right? It can hold much more capacity and generate way more voltage. So at 1500 lumens, the smaller 18650 battery will give you about 30 minutes, right? This 21700 battery will give you 2 hours and 30 minutes. Right, so there's a massive increase in runtime with not so much increase in size. Mass production has lowered the cost of these super batteries so more and more companies are switching to 21700 batteries. This means less downtime, recharging your batteries and you don't have to carry a lot of spares. You can charge the battery via the built-in USB-C port here in the light or via power bank as well. Right, you just connect a power bank to your light and it charges if you don't have a wall USB plug around. So it takes around 4 hours to fully charge the included 5000 milliampere battery, which is incredibly fast, right? Older built-in chargers like the i4000R takes about 6 to 8 hours to charge. If you want to charge it even faster, you can use external chargers like the CI2 here, which can charge as fast as 90 minutes. Or if you want something more portable, you can go for the UI1, right? Even slimmer, smaller, but it charges a bit more slower. Note that this light is not compatible with any 1865 or the normal 2170 batteries. You can only use the 2170i batteries which you can see the plus and negative points are all on the top of the light. So that's it, the six key things a flashlight should have for police and military use. One-handed operation, right? a mixed beam for distance, a strobe ready capability, silent signaling, a real strike bezel, and of course the modern 21700 batteries. If you've been looking for the best duty light that Nightcore has to offer, built from years of real operator feedback, there is nothing better than the P23i right now for 2023. Don't put your personal safety on inferior lights that claim to be tactical. Right now you know what technologies are out there today, you can see for yourself if your light checks off the six key things I mentioned earlier. Nightcore has been making lights for professional operators for years, right? Over 15 different international agencies have Nightcore as their standard issue. So they know exactly how their lights are being used, the increasing challenges that operators on the ground face, and what is expected of future gear. The P23i is actually the sixth generation of lights in the P series, right? It started from the P20 here, then it had the P20 UV, the P20 V2, P22R, P20i, P20iX, and now finally the P23i. So when you have six iterations and six years of R&D built into a light, it's impossible to go wrong. Some of you might already have the P20iX, the flat light, right? and you wonder if you still need the P23i. If you always 100% work indoors and never need to see further than 50 meters, you're good with the P20iX. If your job takes you outdoors into distances beyond 50 meters and you need to engage targets at the 
100 to 200 meter range, then you need the P23i to round out your kit. These are all in stock now at nightcallites.com. If you buy it online from us today, I'll also throw in three of the most useful items for duty officers. The latest generation NU06 LE beacon, right? a four color beacon with three mounting options, multicolor blinkers, red blue police flash. This is 59 Singapore dollars, you'll get it free. Next, you get the NSG20 bony hat. Right, this is a waterproof discreet hat without any branding on it so it can be used for any kind of ops the only branding is a hidden nightcore tag in the middle here so this is 39 dollars you can get it free as well the last is the tiki uv a tiny but powerful 1000 milliwatt uv light for all manner of authentication work but the most useful feature is the 70 lumen lantern lights that can blink or stay on for close range work right this is 49 dollars you also get it free if you buy everything outside it's 346 singapore dollars but you can get it now for just 229 singapore dollars you can also go for the three months installment so there's literally no, no excuse to take advantage of this incredible offer they're all in stock now and if you need to buy them in bulk for your organization just contact me directly and i'll be able to work out a deal for you as usual this will sell out fast so order yours today once your order is placed we'll courier everything to your door within a couple of days link to order is in the description below as usual this comes with our 60 day money back guarantee and fast free three year warranty so there's no risk at all that's it if you'd like to see more videos like this where we help you choose the best lights for your work or adventures subscribe below and i'll see you on the next video all right mj signing out